Hi, I'm Dr. Erica Bruner. I am a vet in Vermont whose practice is focused on end-of-life care and acupuncture for dogs and cats. And in this video, I'm going to talk about the exact words that I say when I come to a house to do a home euthanasia and I'm talking to the kids that are there. Um, there are other videos in this series about deciding whether or not your kids should be present at home euthanasia or any euthanasia. Um, and then there's a more general video about talking to kids about the death of their pet. This video is specifically about the exact things that I say. Um, and so I do try to talk to parents in advance uh, to both help them figure out what to say if they need help and also to kind of figure out what the kid is going to know and maybe, you know, get a little bit of a sense of who the kids are before I meet them. Um, so that's helpful if that's possible. And then when I get there, I introduce myself. Hi, I'm Erica. I'm an animal doctor and I'm here today to help your pet die. I say that right out. I think it's important to talk about death very clearly. Um, I avoid using the word sleep at any point because I don't want them to be confused or scared about death versus sleep. Um, it's actually kind of hard to talk about sedation in anesthesia without using the word sleep and I bring that up. So I will say that I'm there to help their pet die and usually at that point they or their parents or if they don't maybe me will have some conversation about why we're doing that and um, if it's left to me I, I generally don't make a big deal out of that one. I usually just say I'm here to help him die because I'm an animal doctor and that's part of what we do and because he's very old and very sick, or I will leave off the old part if it's not old, um, but he's in pain and he's suffering, and we've done the best that we can to make that better for him, but we've reached the point where we can't make it any better, and we've decided that the best thing for him is that he needs to die, we need to help him die, because we don't want him to suffer anymore. And that's pretty straightforward. Um, and that may be enough, or they may have questions. They may have questions for me then about that. They may have questions for their parents. I'm absolutely prepared to take all the time we need to address that. Um, and then I'll move into explaining what I'm going to do. And I explain this similarly to how I explain it to adults, but with more detail and kind of in a more basic way. So I will tell them that we're doing everything we're doing to try to make this as peaceful and comfortable for everybody as possible, including their pet. And that the first thing that we're gonna do is to, to give their pet some heavy sedation. And I ask them, do they know the words sedation or anesthesia? And sometimes they do, uh, but often they don't. And so when they don't, I'll say, you know, anesthesia is an old word. It comes from ancient Greek and it means not feeling. And anesthesia is a kind of medicine that we give so that somebody doesn't feel something. If somebody's gonna have some surgery, surgery is usually painful. We give them anesthesia so that they don't feel it. And we can use anesthesia right where the surgery is going to happen, or we can give a kind of anesthesia that affects the brain. And that's the kind of anesthesia that I'm gonna to use today. Um, it kind of looks like your animal is asleep, but it's not actually asleep. Um, and the reason for that is it's medicine that I'm giving that's making them this way. And what the medicine does is it actually turns off that part of their brain that feels or sees or thinks or uh, hears. And so when that medicine is affecting them, uh, they can't see anything or feel anything or hear anything and they don't have any thoughts. Um, we can't wake them up from it so it's not sleep but that's good because it means that anything I do after that, they're not gonna feel and it's not gonna be scary to them. They're not gonna be worried about it and it's not gonna hurt. So I'm gonna give them an injection of the anesthesia medicine first. That part might sting a little bit, but we're gonna pet them and talk to them and if it's possible to feed them, I always try to use some treats and I'll say, and we'll, we'll just distract them from that injection. And the injection actually has medicine in it that relieves pain. So it's gonna not feel ouchy for any more than just the very short time that they're getting the injection. And then it's gonna take about five or 10 minutes for it to take effect. And during that time, they're probably gonna become a little stumbly 
you know, their, their brain is going to gradually stop thinking and stop working. And so that's not going to hurt, but it might look like they don't quite know where to put their feet. Um, their eyes are going to close a little bit, but they're not going to close all the way. That's also different from sleep. And I'm going to check them to, to make sure that they're not feeling anything. So I'll be touching their face or I'll be squeezing their toes to see if they have any response to that. And if they still have any bit of response, then I'm going to wait until they don't. Because I just want to know that they've peacefully gone into this state of not feeling anything that's called anesthesia or sedation. And then once they're in that state, I'm going to give a second injection. And it's the medicine that actually helps them die. It's the part that turns off their brain the rest of the way and it also turns off their body. So their brain is not going to work to tell their lungs to breathe. It's not going to work to tell their heart to beat. The brain is just going to stop and then the breathing will stop and then the heart will stop and then he'll be dead. And I'm going to check to make sure the heart has stopped. And if you have any questions at any point, I can answer them. So that's basically my explanation. I don't usually give it all right the way through like that. I usually will do it piece by piece as we're doing things. Um, and I very often stop and ask for questions. And um, we're also prepared that at any point kids might find this a little much to deal with and that that's okay and that they might need to leave the room. So you've got to make sure that they have an adult to be with them when they're doing that. Um, so I guess that's pretty much it. If you have any questions for me, if you'd like to do a consultation about your particular situation, I can do that in person at your home in Vermont, or we can do it over the phone or Skype anywhere in the world. And the easiest way to get in touch with me is to visit my website, heartofvermontvet.com, and there's a contact form on there, and you just send that in, and um, it will get emailed to me, and I look forward to talking with you. Thanks.